Hi, I'm Kate Krieger Watkins with Mason County Press, and we're here with Andy. I go, I call you Andy. Yep, that's fine. Okay. That's Some fine. people, call, you're, I know your wife calls you Andrew, yeah, but yeah. maybe that's when you're in trouble. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> anyway. uh, we are starting a brand new two day a week series called The Scoop for Mason County Press, and what it is, is we're meeting with uh, local business owners, local officials, local members of the community um, of Mason County. And we're talking about different headlines that are in the news, um, different business things, um, politics. It could be politics. It could be nonprofit things. It could be cool fundraisers that are coming up, cool events that are coming up in the county. So um, you, we decided to go with you first because we knew that you would totally be on <laughs> Well, because beer is good. <laughs> well, well and let's, maybe people don't know who you are. Oh, oh, okay. Andy is the owner of Starving Artist Brewery, which... Another piece of the scoop is that whoever we're talking to, if they own a business or they're on a board or something like that, we're going to do the filming at that establishment. So not only does it kind of make you more at ease, but it also kind of gives you a little bit of free publicity too. So we're looking for sponsors who might want to do this, but then as a sponsor too, we would love to come and talk to you as well. So um, we're going to just talk about some headlines that are going on. Um, first thing is the Mason County Board of Commissioners um, with the death of Wally Cherenko. The District 1 yeah. seat is open now, and there are two gentlemen who are going up to be... Um, Would that be an interim? Like yes, they're going to be appointed by the board tonight, okay. and then it would be uh, the rest of Wally's term, and then they, if they decided to stay on, they would go and do an actual election like yeah. the board of commissioners do. Yeah. And those two people are John Kreinbrick and Nick Krieger. Hmm. I know I know one of those guys. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> moving on, um, a 70-year-old Muskegon woman was um, injured in a two-car crash on Saturday on U.S. 10 in Amber Township, which I feel, that's close to home for you because yep. you guys live here on South Stiles Road, and I feel this corner over here, even with the stoplight, still is. It's, it, it's definitely one of those, uh, look twice, even though it's green, it doesn't mean go. <laughs> No, yes. <laughs> Look twice. It's or always safe. Does yellow mean go faster? No, okay. no, it really does not. Yes. Usually so. red means go faster to a lot of people out there, and that's that's it's that's scary. wrong. Wrong. Well, it is it is a scary <laughs> intersection out it is, there. It so, is. and I'm I'm not really sure if that's exactly where this accident happened. I don't think it was, but this the ten corridor between Lennington and Scottville seems to continue to have a lot of weird traffic issues and I don't understand why right there people seem to get more accidents than other places that seem to have the same kind of logistics yeah, traffic way. so anyway yeah get off your phones well pay attention yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't text. please don't watch this episode on your phone in the car well, Unless you're, while you're driving. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you're parked, yeah. So I guess a, um, a Saturday evening Sherman Township house fire claimed the, the entire house of a family out there. So, um, yeah, so I guess uh, efforts are underway to help this family out. Um, and, yeah, it's just terrible, especially this time of year, getting into, like, the warmer season and stuff. It's just right. so keep tuned to Mason County Press to uh, see the efforts for that family. And then uh, also... Um, we're going to get into kind of why we're here in a second with you, but tomorrow there's another big thing happening. The um, Lennington Area School bond issue is going up for vote. Mm -hmm. um, and voting, I think, opens at 7 a.m. and it runs till 8 p.m. at all the different um, areas. And this is for anybody that lives in the Lennington Area School District. I think a lot of people get confused between, you know, with mayors you yeah, vote for if you live in the tomorrow. city limits. But this is the entire school district. So if you are zoned in the Lettington School District, not school of choice, not like living in Scottville, taking your kids in. If you actually live in the Lettington School District, you can go and vote for this um, tomorrow, wherever your elected voting place is. And it's really um, about a lot of building upgrades. They want to um, close down the lower elementary um, buildings, which are Lakeview, which is located at the corner of Haight and Lewis, and Franklin, which is located basically on Anderson right behind the high school, the south end of the high school, and those are the K-2 buildings, and then they would also close down Foster, which is located on Foster between Emily and Levina there, um, and kind of consolidate all those kids into one very large building, 
Um, they're talking about different uh, security reasons, um, just outdated buildings and those kinds of things. Um, they'll have like three different playgrounds for the kids. Um, and then they're gonna do a lot of up, upgrades on the junior high and high school or the middle school. I still went to it when it was seventh and eighth grade, so I call it junior <laughs> high. It will always be junior high. So that's the sixth through eighth building and the ninth through twelfth building and really kind of blow out the back of the high school currently towards Franklin School to put in some new academic wings, change around a lot of the placement of different locations, better flow for traffic and again security issues and traffic issues. And there are a lot of people who are very much in support of it and there are a lot of people who are very much not in support of it. For various different reasons sure. you know and um, it will you know raise your taxes a little bit that's one of the issues that people have other people really know that the buildings are out of date and feel that there's nothing that they can do to fix these buildings and they're just becoming almost too hazardous for these kids to stay in or other people are like well have we really ex have we really looked into that enough sure. you know so and there's a lot of different issues about that so just remember if you are a registered voter in the city of Lennington and the Lennington school district to get out and vote tomorrow whether you're for it or against it your vote matters and especially in these kinds of situations because we're Absolutely. talking about just one school district there's if we're, you know everybody thinks oh my vote doesn't matter for the pres presidential election Yes, it does. But this, it matters even, even more, more because there's so many <laughs> right. less get people. There. Find a way like to I've get there. going like this a lot right. in the last Take your lunch minutes. break. Bring, yeah. in, bring a lunch. Go vote. Go vote. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just do it. Very important. It is very important. Whether you want it or not, it's, it, it's important. So that brings me to why I'm kind of here today. Tomorrow is a big day for the brewery. Yep. And yep. you guys have been kind of going through some different things about wanting to add on yep. a beer garden? I mean, I guess that's the best way to put it. Okay. You know, for anybody for anybody who's truly not fully aware of, of what it is that we're trying to do um, is, you know, we, our current location is in a agricultu agriculturally zoned district um, and Mason County zoning that was approved in, in June of 2018 does allow the presence of a microbrewery in an ag zone district with certain standards. Um, and uh, at the beginning of this process, it was we were, we were hoping for an amendment to our current okay. special land use that was issued in, at the end of 2014. Uh, that it's already been that long. Yeah, I know. Surprise! It's, okay. uh, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, and what was, what was decided was that there were too many changes and that we needed to apply for a new special land use. Um, and so, uh, at the time, we didn't meet three of the standards, which included uh, which included a ten acre parcel, which is still the big one. Um, How many acres do you guys? We're on yeah. five. Okay. We're on five. Um, uh, the second was that two acres, either on the pro property or um, controlled by the owner of the brewery, uh, two acres of active farming of products that are used in our finished products, so okay. it'd be barley, hops, something like that, okay. right? Rye, anything like that. Um, and then the third, the third uh, standard was uh, that portions must be tasting room portions, and that it cannot operate as a bar. So what? So explain what are tasting room. Portions. All right, that's what um, nobody knows. <laughs> and so, oh, okay. um, and so at the ZBA meeting, the, uh, the after, after the first planning commission meeting, uh, we were we were requested to go the, to the ZBA and, and seek variances for those three standards. Um, and it was the decision of the the um, of the ZBA that that the tasting room portions uh, was in fact out of the county's jurisdiction. Um, that that is something that's regulated by uh, by the state of Michigan. Um, okay. And so that that one was was moved aside. Uh, the second was that uh, with the two acres of farming, uh, that uh, any kind of land that would be leased by the owner, you know, so it would be controlled by the owner, that that would suffice. Um, and it just came down to that 10 acre, uh, to that 10 acre okay. requirement that we couldn't meet. So they, they denied the, the variances based on that, that. So what's happening tomorrow night? All right, then? so to tomorrow night, uh, we go back uh, to the Planning Commission. Uh, I guess the good news is we're going back uh, with one standard that we don't meet. Uh, because in the in the meantime, after after the ZBA's uh, decision, 
we decided that we would start an active farming operation on our property. Oh, so okay. we would meet that standard. Okay. Uh, plant some hops and, and harvest well, I'm maple syrup. Would be out yep, it would be on the north. Yep, on the north side okay. of the property. Okay. Um, and we would we would harvest maple syrup. We have berry trees and bushes cool. that we could do. Uh, we already make mulberry uh, mulberry beer in the in the you know in the summer. Uh, there's many many things that we could do in that farming operation that that would uh, that would meet that standard. Okay. So um, so tomorrow more or less uh, uh, we have to go back before the planning commission with the idea that um, that two of the three standards that we were seeking variances on uh, are no longer on the table, which is good. So we have made progress okay. since the first meeting, uh, and that the 10 acre requirement is still. Um, is still the elephant in the room, I guess, and okay. and you know try to figure out some kind of creative solution around it is the is the hope, and uh, and basically finding out if anybody has a has that definition of why or the okay. the reasoning you know behind you know why the significance of the ten acres, if, you know what what was the decision based on? Yeah, kind I, of thing. I I would so, like to know that too. Right, it just seems like oh. I think for everybody's you know it's I think zoning is a really complicated thing, and I think. You know, I'm hopeful that in the future we can uh, maybe encourage our commissioners to write definitions to the standards, so that sure. when when events like this arise, that they can be clear and concise, um, and instead of so up to interpretation, I guess would be a good way to put it. It so. seems like a lot of laws are that I would love to see not just with zoning, with right. many things right. to be a lot more like you could you know even if you had to like google it like right this, this is what, what are the standards <laughs> this is it yep this and then the why. definitions and then you're and like this, oh okay oh, that makes well, sense, that makes sense. So. right and so I'm anyway like, so it's the, that's our that's our current situation okay. and you know we're we're gonna we're gonna fight the good fight and we're gonna you know try to find a creative solution with the county and yeah. well and that's what, another thing i wanted to bring up i know when this first came out a lot of people were kind of saying like oh Ludington, letting and it's like it has nothing to do with the city of Ludington. It's a right. county. Yes, decision. yes, please, yes, yes, please. Everybody understand that a lot of people are, are associating this with the Ludington. city, right? With the city of Ludington, this is a Mason County issue. Um, the our township defers the zoning to to the county, so right. we are under the county's jurisdiction here. This is a county decision. This has nothing to do with the city of Ludington or Amber Township, or Amber Town right. right? Or Amber Township, right? Right. This is the Mason County zoning. Okay. Because I know people, <laughs> it, if you're not, it's confusing. Know, it is. I and mean, it's confusing. Boards that, but and appeal been, boards yeah. and sure, sure. It is unbelievable. for Ludington and planning right. commission for the county. Unbelievably yes. confusing. And there's and there's so many standards that you know some you know you ask well why can't we be here well this is why and then you got to well and you got to remember you're dealing with um, alcohol yes too right. so that adds right. on a whole oh, sure, other sure you know and I think a lot of people get you know and, and for us you know for us it's being good stewards of our license that the licenses that are issued by the Michigan Department of Agriculture exactly. and the state of Michigan you know to be good stewards of that we you know we have to have training on alcohol serving and yeah. you know and production you know we, there's things like that so yes I and I do I do get the the reservations because it, you know, I mean, it is a responsibility on everybody's part to, mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to partake, to partake responsibly. Absolutely. So let's just talk about Starving Artists yes. for a little while. You started awesome. in... We, uh, we actually, opened okay. officially in June of 2015. So we're coming up on, okay. on our four-year anniversary. And you guys were the first um, ever winner of that big mo business yep. momentum yep. that the Chamber did. Yep. And um, that was a $50,000 yep. award that you guys it got. It did not suck. <laughs> no, no, did that, not suck. And I'm sure every uh, recipient of that from when you guys have gotten hit would also would it, probably say that. Exactly. So yeah, um, tell us a little bit about um, what you actually do because you do all the brewing on the premises. Yep. yep. And um, yep. from you know how much I love beer. I hate beer. <laughs> so um, I know a lot about the lingo, but. Talk to people like what types of beer you brew. Yeah, we. I, I guess we we try to. You know, we opened with an idea that we were going to stick to standard um, styles and stick kind of true to you know. But uh, the business has kind of evolved more into that creative side, which it kind of fits our name a little bit better. You know that. If it's your uh, person. Right. 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 So we. You know, we swore we were never going to put fruit in our beer. Well, now we put ice cream in our beers. Sorry about that. Um, we're going to do it better next time. Uh, 
but it's all about that creative pushing the limits now right. of what you know what flavors will work with what flavors and what water chemistry will work with what styles and you know we really dive deep into you know I guess I guess I would say we're probably not the most consistent brewery because I'm always looking for a way to make our beer better uh, I, you know, I so think it, that's good though yeah no, I mean that's what it, we're small enough that you know you, we can we're small enough that it can really that we can change on a dime right. you know so it's uh it's something that I feel like um, being small like we are gives us the freedom to experiment and Absolutely. and come up with come up with different styles and different hybrids of different you know combinations of styles and right. and find you know just what kind of flavors will really accent other flavors and you know do crazy right. beers. I would think that if there was like you know if you made one you're like oh this is awful it's easy for you just to be like throw it away. Oh yeah. Whereas like with yeah. the big big breweries would be like. Well, we've already sunk, you know, millions of dollars in the promoting this, and it's terrible, but we're putting it out there, you know? So. No, we are fortunate that, uh, I mean, it's still a, a slight investment, you know, that you're dumping well, in, yes. you know, but, but yeah, if, if the beer isn't good, I, I hope, I like to tell people, I hope this is the worst beer you ha ever right. have from us, because right. I'm always trying, so if it's bad, yeah, nobody ever gets to try that one. Okay, and that's good, that's good to know, that's a, you should put that on there, so, um, we're all, we're, is your beer now like how far so we just, away from Amber Township are we serving this we, beer? We just rezoned. That's kind of funny. Our district uh, or our distribution area. Um, we we are available in the western half of the Lower Peninsula, um, and we uh, yeah, just draw a line down the middle and go okay. towards the lake, and you'll go you'll west. have a good chance of yep, finding some of our beer somewhere. Okay. Uh, but what we did was we made basically our our uh, primary uh, market is from Muskegon to Traverse City now. Okay. Um, you know, then like Lansing, Grand Rapids, kind of up to Petoskey, al almost up towards you know a little bit north of Traverse. That's kind of what we're calling our secondary oh. market. And then any any outlying counties that are just a lot harder for us to get to, and uh, those we're we're considering are when available. Okay. You know, Got it. Like our limited. Whatever limited, they kind yep. of can get yep. it to. So. Yep. Exactly. Okay. And then how many um, how many employees do you have? Currently, uh, one with one on the way. <laughs> and so, so there's you and then one. Yep. And one on the way. It sounds like yep. they're, you're birthing. I know. The other well, one. I mean, they're family. Right, so. Right, yeah. <laughs> so. so I think people, what, need, what they need to know is like, they might think like, oh, well, that's not a huge district. But there's two people. Right. Two people making all of this beer and, you know, it. It's a lot of work. I mean, I know you it's crazy. Kind of, yeah. you yeah. kind of live and out it, here it, a lot of times. It, so. it is. It is. And, and yeah, and, and yeah, we we pull a lot of hours and we do, you know, we really uh, but it's but it's a labor of love. We still love right. it. It's a great industry. It's a uh, it's a collaborative industry. It's we you know, collaborate, don't compete is kind of the mentality of the craft beer like industry, yeah. which I love. You know, uh, we love the breweries downtown and uh, you know, surrounding areas and if they need help, you right. know, we'll be the first to be there to help right. if if and vice versa. So if we need help, they've been cool. really kind to reach cool. out. And, you know, it's always an open, you know, open door. So okay, how can people find you? Um, what are your hours? All right, so on the weekends we're open uh, by appointments. Uh, we have open appointments on Fridays and Saturdays from noon to five. Uh, the best way to get a hold of us is to go to our website. Um, either reach out to us on Facebook or go to our website. There's an area that explains how that works. What is your website? Uh, starving uh, www.starvingartist.beer. Oh, that's fancy. a thing. It's pretty cool. That's cool. <laughs> well, I, I want to thank you for being on thank my you. being on the first episode of the Scoop for Mason County Press. Excited. And thank you. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> we uh, we look forward to more of these episodes. And like we said, they're going to be kind of twice a week starting out. And if you want to be a sponsor, you just need to uh, contact us uh, either at editor at masoncountypress.com or contact us through our Facebook page. And we'll see you soon. Thanks, Andy. Thank you.